This is not a luxury. We need it. We want these people. Uh, because without that, we are again powerless. Because the land loss has too much power in this city. And this is outrageous. This should, should never happen. This, everybody has responsibilities. We pay the rent. They should give us what, we, what is in the contract, what is in the lease. So this is very important that these eight people are going to be in, in our city uh, helping us. The other thing that is very important is that uh, the, the program Mura, that you hear about that program, that program is very good because it will give money to uh, non-profit housing and to land trust and co-ops. Remember co-ops? How fun they are! How important they are! And we forgot our co-ops! We need these co-ops! We need more social housing! And this is something that it was an advocacy from everybody here! Because what you are doing right now is a very good San Valentine! You know? You are giving your time for love for the city! And we are in the goal and we are doing it! So this is awesome! And to finish, I see so, um, something that is very important. Remember the rain bank? Yes. The rain bank, we uh, again fight for that and they're going to get more money because unfortunately, well, things are going, increasing the rent, uh, the food, we know all this, and this is why it's very important that the council say yes to this. So thank you so much for the opportunity, and remember, we're going to see how much love they have for us. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you for reminding some of us about what uh, just a dollar eighty cents a day and more for property taxes will get us. It will get us more support for tenants. It will get us will allow community land trusts, indigenous housing providers non-profit housing providers to buy up existing affordable housing and tra transfer them over to make those homes affordable forever instead of being converted to luxury condos. So that's something to celebrate. Woo! Um, our last speaker, but no, not certainly not least, is Andrea Vasquez Jimenez. Andrea, woo! Andrea is the director of Policing Three Schools and is part of the Redesigning Community Safety Coalition. As a part of the coalition, um, she is joined by over 30 organizational partners who together support non-police alternatives to community safety and advocate for changes in the way in the ways community safety is invested in. We welcome um, Andrea. <laughs> communities, including educational spaces, have more support and resources, not more policing. And that makes them safe in and of themselves. We know that there is only one option that is in alignment with taking care of all Torontonians, including leaving no one behind. Now, one option that is actually aligned with the city's commitment, one that is aligned with evidence-based and that is fiscally responsible, and that is investing into the root issues, the root causes, addressing social and structural determinants of health and equity, not an increase to the police budget. We know that increased police spending has no correlation with increased safety. Yet for years, we continuously see money being funneled and siphoned out of our communities, being plundered into policing. Shame! And this is despite the data, the reports, the research, the lived and living experiences. Those lives who are also taken away tell us what we already know. That the carcerality and policing those systems, there are systemic harms and perpetual violence that are caused by them. We know what has to be done, and that is divest from policing and reallocate those funds, refund. 
defending our communities into what actually creates real community safety and well-being for all Torontonians. I want to take this time to amplify evidence-based recommendations that are in the Rethinking Community Safety Report. We need City Council to urgently propose an amendment and reallocate more than 250 million that are spent on police to pol that are policing young people, that are policing people with mental health challenges, going through mental health crises, that are policing unhoused folks. Shame! We need to have those resources and that funding shifted away from police and reinvested into alternative crisis response. Woo! Into social support mechanisms and community-based support models and community services. In 2020, Toronto City Council committed, and I want to quote, when crisis assistance intervention is established, that the city would subtract the cost of this new service from future police budgets, end quote. They haven't done that. Shame. We need city council to urgently propose another amendment and divest further from the police budget of an additional upwards of 26 million dollars and invest those funds into the Toronto Community Crisis Service proposed citywide 2024 expansion. Yeah. While simultaneously disband the police-led and police-involved mobile crisis intervention team and reinvest those funds into community supports and services. Yeah. Our elected officials do not need any more evidence. What they need to do is leave their cowardice behind. Yes. What we need is political will and their political courage to divest fun funds from policing, reinvest into our communities. What we need are more supports and resources, not more policing. Fund care, not cops. Fund care, not cops.